If you're familiar with biomimicry, have you noticed that the same examples are used over and over again? It just makes me wonder, like, if biomimicry is so promising, why don't we see more evidence of it in the world? Look, I find biomimicry fascinating, but as a designer, I don't practice it. And I'm asking myself why. So I thought, why not make a video so we both can discover, like, what are some of the roadblocks that are really preventing designers from practicing biomimicry in the design of everyday things? The first challenge is that as a designer, it's much easier to be inspired by how nature looks versus how nature works. And this is really the difference between biomorphism, which has to do with appearance, and biomimicry, which has to do with functionality. And if you haven't heard of biomorphism, it refers to um, using visual elements in a design that are inspired by nature. Now, there is nothing wrong with using nature uh, uh, as a source of visual inspiration. In fact, biomorphic designs can have a real advantage over uh, other forms because people tend to have a uh, preference for natural nature and natural forms. The next major challenge is not understanding how biomimicry works in practice. Biomimicry works through metaphor and analogy. Metaphor is really like borrowing an attribute from one thing and applying it to another. Take the pine cone. It opens and closes depending on the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. Now Nike applied this idea to the fabric, uh, to fabric that's specifically used in a situation where it's desirable uh, for fabric to open up and allow moisture to evaporate from an athlete's skin. We can look at examples of biomimicry, like how the reflection on the cat's eye inspired the design of road reflectors, but it doesn't provide much insight into how biomimicry um, works in practice. So here are two examples. The story of a carpet company called Interface. And in 1994, the founder of Interface told his company, essentially, we are gonna become a, a company with zero footprint. And at the time, like, everyone thought he was nuts. <laughs> they thought he was crazy. Uh, but in 2019, they actually achieved their mission. The first thing that they did was they brought together a team of what they called their Echo uh, Dream Team. And they asked, you know, how would nature design a carpet? And so they, they went into the forest, they went for walks in the forest, they looked at trees, bark, you know, everything, things in nature. So they looked at the, the, the floor, <laughs> the floor of a forest. And on the floor of a forest are leaves. <laughs> There's many leaves and they're overlapping. You can take one away and it's fine. You can put a new leaf down and it doesn't really look any different than it did before. They asked, you know, like, how could we make carpets function like leaves. And what they ended up doing is instead of, you know, wall-to-wall -wall carpet, which was the standard of the carpet industry, is they, they created carpet tiles, kind of like leaves. And the, uh, the visual um, design of, of each tile was different kind of to, to, so that it functioned like a leaf. You know, each leaf is different and unique, and you can, you can put five leaves down, take, take two away, put three down, and they still work together. So they use this idea, this, this uh, learning from how leaves, let's say, interact with each other. <laughs> and they essentially design carpet tiles to be like that. They, they completely changed how they um, I guess integrated the different colors of the carpet, the design, the, the visual design. They kind of invented this new way of making carpets that really revolutionized the industry. One of the major things uh, with carpets and carpet installation is this toxic glue. Well, they asked, okay, how does nature glue things? They discovered after, you know, discussing it in groups, nature doesn't really glue things. You know, nature holds things down with gravity. 
uh, there was another group that was talking about geckos and, you know, some kind of stickiness. Another uh, uh, group was talking about bird feathers and how, if you look at how bird feathers are kind of come together and meet, they have kind of like some kind of hook where they, they hook to each other. And that's how you, multiple bird feathers kind of stay together. And they asked themselves like, okay, well, what if, you know, carpet tiles could uh, be hooked together in some way? Uh, because then, you know, gravity would hold the carpet down. <laughs> but if they had some kind of like hook, then that would keep them together in this plane. What they ended up with was something called tactiles, which was a small uh, sticky plastic part that they would uh, stick four carpet tiles uh, in the corners and that would that would um, glue the four corners together and it opened a whole new market for them so and that was the residential market because before you know with the toxic glue having to 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 uh, to glue down large pieces of carpet there was like air quality problems um, but these little tactiles made it so easy to to install that you know people wanted these tiles in their homes now practicing biomimicry really requires knowledge about how nature functions and for most uh, designers uh, that isn't their area of expertise they are not trained like biologists and this really highlights uh, one of the um, main, another main challenge to practicing biomimicry, it really requires a kind of interdisciplinary team where there is a biologist on, on the team. And that isn't the status quo. The final challenge that I'll talk about briefly is, with biomimicry is, is implementation. And implementation is a problem, is, or is a challenge with doing anything. Any, anytime you try and do something new, it requires more effort because people have to learn. They have to learn new ways, new methods, how to use new materials. Um, it, it just requires more. And it's already a challenge just to uh, design a product to market and get it to market. And so the, the adding another layer of unknown or of, of having to, um, you know, learn more things just adds to that kind of R&D effort. So there you go. That's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, till next time, we'll see you later.